Hello and welcome to tonight's book reading session of Preparing for the Day After, a picture ebook. Preparing for the Day After is a photojournalistic treatise on disaster mitigation published by me, Malini Shankar and Walter Keller for the 10th anniversary of the Asian tsunami. Tonight we will start the subchapter on floods, flash floods and landslides. In the in, This is a subchapter in the Hydrometeorological Disasters, Chapter 22. Before that, let us start with uh, what we have learned so far. Water and sanitation is central to developmental discourse. Culture sensitive food security is also evolved out of local agrometeorological conditions prevalent in an area. Livelihoods based on local agrometeorological conditions are the best means of ensuring livelihood security. Climate change adaptation, menstrual hygiene, especially for indigenous tribal women, solid waste management, universal health care access, sustainable development goals, they are all factors to be included in the development agenda. Media personnel have to be trained in reporting disaster preparedness or the lack of it at district level. Disaster is the impact of a calamity on the human landscape. This includes the impact on lives, livelihoods, livestock and landscape. Tonight we will start with a subchapter on floods, flash floods and landslides. Climate change is not a watershed event like the Asian tsunami for instance. Unless we have a huge super volcano which has global impact and can lead to an ice age overnight. The Anthropocene version of climate change is triggered by anthropogenic factors like industrial pollution and unsustainable development far in excess of other natural geological causes and cycles. Climate change manifests as an increase in the intensity of extreme weather events. So you have more frequent avalanches, blizzards in colder areas, more precipitation, more and intense cyclones, cloud bursts, coastal incursion, desertification, droughts, epidemics, flash floods, floods, famine, fog, fugue, forest fires, global warming, hailstorms, mudslides, landslides, storms, sea level rise, iceberg melt triggered tsunamis, urban floods and so on. Each of these extreme weather events can have colossal impact on human community. The consequences include food and livelihood insecurity, lack of shelter causing more imbalanced fiscal growth, huge fiscals including impaired tax regimes, impact on public health like COVID-19 has shown us, impact on international trade and commerce, tax, aviation, shipping, public health, human developments and so on. Today let me read to you about floods, flash floods and urban floods. In India, 40% of the land mass is vulnerable to floods and riverine erosion according to India's National Disaster Management Authority. Floods in India have taken a very high toll of human lives as well as that of livestock and have had uncalled for impact on livelihood. More than 1 million households are severely affected by floods every year in India alone. If this is a repetitive and cyclical process, surely it calls for political will to mitigate disaster risk and do what it takes, including incorporating disaster mitigation in the development agenda to prevent loss of lives and livelihood. Floods have been a recurrent phenomenon in India and cause huge losses to lives, livelihoods, property systems, properties, uh, livelihood systems, infrastructure and public utilities. India's high risk and vulnerability is highlighted by the fact that 40 million hectares out of a geographic area of 32,90,000 hectares, no sorry, 32 crores 90 lakh hectares in India is prone to flood. On an average, 75 lakh hectares of land is affected, 1,600 lives are lost and the damage caused to crop, houses and public utilities is to the tune of Rs. 1,805 crores due to floods alone per year on an average. The maximum number of lives, 11,316, were lost in the year 1977. The frequency of major floods is more than once in five years. Floods have also occurred in areas which were earlier not considered flood prone. 80% of the precipitation takes place in the monsoon months from June to September. The rivers bring heavy sediment load from the catchment. These factors coupled with inadequate carrying capacity of the rivers are responsible for causing flood, drainage congestion and erosion of river banks. Cyclones, cyclonic circulations and cloud bursts cause flash floods and lead to huge losses. The fact that some of the rivers causing damage in India originate in neighboring countries adds another complex dimension to the problem. Continuing the large scale loss of lives, continuing and large scale loss of lives 
and damage to public and private property due to flood indicate that we are still to develop an effective response to flood flooding in the cities and the towns is a recent phenomenon caused by increasing incidence of heavy rainfall in a short period of time indiscriminate encroachment of waterways inadequate capacity of drain and lack of maintenance of the drainage infrastructure says india's national disaster management authorities flood management guidelines the link of which is going to be put up here as well as in the description box below between 1877 and 2005 there have been 283 cyclones 106 of them were severe in a 50 kilometer wide strip on the east coast of india on an average every year 75 lakh hectares of land is affected 1600 lives are lost and the damage caused to crops houses and public utilities is to the tune of 1805 crores due to floods says india's national disaster management authority guidelines on flood management the same link is going to be put up here as well as in the description box below quote Floods being the most common natural disaster, people have, out of experience, devised many ways of coping with them. However, encroachments into the flood plains over the years has aggravated the food problem, sorry, the flood problem, and a need to take effective and sustained flood mitigation measures has been felt. Various measures, structural and non-structural, have been taken by the central and the state governments, and as a result, considerable protection has been provided to the people. However, more efforts are required in this direction and there is a need to put in place a te techno-legal regime to make structures flood-proof and regulate the activities in the flood plains of the rivers. Flood forecasting and warning and decision support system will be established on a scientific basis taking into account the latest technological developments in the world, says the NDMA flood mitigation guidelines. The Mumbai flood was the first major urban flood documented in modern India. In The Mumbai flood of 18th July 2005 was quite literally a watershed in urban flood management lesson. Mumbai was battered by 944.2 millimeters of rain in one day. The busy metropolis came to a standstill with trains and vehicles stranded on roads. Buildings were collapsing. The town of Thane, Nanded, the towns of Thane, Nanded, Parbani, Raigad and Ratnagiri were underwater. In Mumbai, water levels rose rapidly within three hours, submerging the roads and railway tracks. The traffic was completely immobilized. All the low-lying areas in the city were heavily flooded. The poor who lived in juggies or thatched huts in these areas were the worst victims. It also hit the middle and the upper class segments. All the ground floor flats were underwater and the people lost all their possessions electronic goods, furniture, clothes and utensils. Flooding crippled the basic services and lifelines in the city. There was, uh, there was no electricity in Mumbai suburban and Thane districts. As the telephone exchanges came underwater, the phones stopped working. Mobile phones were also not accessible anymore. As a uh, result, the people who were stranded could not access information and were subjected to terrible hardship. The Western and the Central Railways did not run their local services for a number of days. The local services on the Central Line have not yet been fully restored even today. All the long-distance trains run by the Central Railways were cancelled. These uh, statistics I have quoted are from 2013 and 14. It needs to be revised. If you want to use this uh, material for your own examination or to quote it, please cross check for the latest update on technology on the statistics. The Western and the Central Railways did not run their local services for a number of days. The local services on the Central Line have not yet been fully, fully restored even today. All the long distance trains run by the Central Railways were cancelled. The tracks on the Konkan Railways were badly damaged and it would take many days before the trains could run again on these tracks. The national and international flights at the Sahar and Santa Cruz airports were disrupted for a number of days. In Thane district, the flooding affected all the urban centers, Kalyan, Dombivali, Amba, Ambarnath, Ulasnagar and Bhivandi, which are part of the urban agglomeration, were under flood waters. Heavy rainfall in the catchment area filled up almost all the reservoirs in Thane district. The re release of water from these reservoirs caused the water levels to rise further and aggravate the flooding. Despite a respite from the rains, the water level in these towns did not reduce. In Konkan, Raigad and Ratnagiri districts, ah, they had large areas under submersion. The towns which are severely affected by the floods are Roha, Mahad and Mangao in Raigad district and Kher and Chiplun in Ratnagiri district. A large number of villages 
villages were cut off by the flood. In Raigad and Ratnagiri, the heavy rainfall triggered landslides. There were at least six villages in Raigad and Ratnagiri uh, where landslides caused deaths. In village Jui near Mahat in Raigad district, uh, more than 100 people died due to the collapse of houses under the impact of a major landslide. A massive search and rescue operation was conducted in all the villages to extricate dead bodies from the debris. The Mumbai Goa National Highway was cut off at many points due to large tracks coming underwater. As a result, the traffic on this highway was completely disrupted. The Konkan railways had also come under submergence at many places. A number of trains were stranded at different stations. The government made the arrangements for evacuating the passengers from these trains. In Marathwada, Parbhani and Nanded districts, experiencing severe flooding was the norm. In Parbhani, the river Dudna was in spade. It was the worst flooding in the last 100 years, cutting off more than 20 villages. The Indian Navy deployed boats to evacuate the people from these villages. In Nanded, almost all the taluks, including the district headquarters, were seriously affected by a rise in water levels in the Godavari. It was the Indian Air Force which came to the rescue of people here by dropping food packets in the area cut off by the flood. Sangli and Kolapur areas were extensively flooded by the release of water from the Koina, Varna and other dams in the region. The backwater effect of the Almaty Dam in Karnataka did not allow flood waters to recede from the Sangli and the Kolapur district. In so Solapur district, the famous pilgrimage Pandarpur was flooded by pilgrimage center that is. Pandarpur was flooded by the release of water from the Ujjaini and the Veer dams. Patan and Karad in Satara district suffered losses from floods in the Koina river. Release of water from dams near Pune inundated low-lying areas in Pune, Pimpri, Chinchwad and many other villages. In terms of human lives lost, it has been one of the worst disasters. Floods claimed almost 1,100 lives in the state, most of them coming from the urban concentrations in Mumbai and Thane. In rural areas, Raigad reported the highest number of deaths, 166, most of which were caused by landslides. The number of missing persons is 54, while 167 people received various kinds of injuries. Massive traffic jams led to unprecedented delays. In a tragic manifestation of urban flood, compounding chaos, a software employee returning home in his AC-powered car died of fumigation by the exhaust fumes of his own air-conditioned car while waiting for the traffic congestion to clear during the flood. In the agriculture sector, approximately 5.5 lakh hectares of land have suffered crop losses, though this figure is expected to increase. Almost the entire Kharif crop in the Konkan region has been destroyed by the flooding. The loss to the sugarcane crop in western Maharashtra is also extensive, which would have a major impact on the production of local sugar mills. More than 20,000 hectares of land have become waste due to the topsoil having been washed away, which would require considerable investment for being reclaimed. Farmers cannot re-sow their crops in the entire region. The total number of cattle losses in the floods is 26,339. The worst affected was Mumbai itself, where more than 15,321 cattle losses were reported, followed by Ratnagiri 3,983, Raigad 2,783, Thane 1,285 and Parbani 1,153. A large number of buffaloes died in Mumbai and Thane, causing a serious loss to the local milk selling industry. People have lost their houses in large numbers. As per the latest reports, 355,917 houses are partially damaged and while 14,142 houses are completely damaged according to the official government of Maharashtra assessment report. In the education sector, more than 20,000 classrooms have been damaged and 97 school buildings have collapsed. About 437 primary healthcare centers, rural hospitals and residential premises for health personnel have been damaged by flooding. The Public Works Department has estimated that it would require 1,200 crore rupees for repairing roads and bridges damaged by flooding. The Maharashtra State Electricity Board has suffered huge losses. 5,667 of its transformers were affected. 12 high-tension towers fell and 14 small distribution stations were flooded. Water supply schemes in both the urban and the rural sectors have suffered extensive damages. The most extensive loss has been suffered by the trade and commerce sector. A large number of shops, commercial establishments and warehouses have suffered heavy losses due to flooding. The Indian Merchants Chamber has pegged these losses at 5,000 rupees cro at crore rupees. Mumbai was inundated with more than 1 lakh tons of garbage needing 3 days to clear the garbage alone. One of the issues that need to be 
underscored is the infrastructural vulnerability of Mumbai. Whenever the city receives heavy rains, its roads get water waterlogged and the traffic is disrupted. Though the municipal corporation undertakes monsoon preparedness measures, its efforts have not proved to be very effective due to its old drainage system. M Mumbai needs to replace its drainage system, which is more than 100 years old and uh, it is at sea level on the coast. So obviously there are a lot of problems there. It would require 1,200 crore rupees to replace the drainage system alone. The government of Maharashtra has already submitted a request for central assistance for replacing its drainage system. In the bottom line, the primary cause for the Mumbai flood was encroachment of drainage paths. Clogging the mangroves with built-up area also caused Mumbaiites very dearly. The fact that there was a deluge of monsoons in such a short span of time led to a rethink of hydrometeorological disaster mitigation. In many ways, the Mumbai flood breached records. The government of India has already released 1,000 crores from the National Contingency Calamity Fund for meeting the immediate requirements of relief and recovery. The government of India has also sanctioned 15,000 tons of food grains through the special component of the Sampurna Grameen Rozgar Yojana. One of the biggest lessons learned from the Mumbai flood, according to the Maharashtra government's official report, was the decision to replace the century-old drainage system, according to the Maharashtra Floods 2005 Relief and Rehabilitation Report of the government of Maharashtra. Government of India, NDMA guidelines, uh, that is the National Disaster Management Authority's guidelines, stipulate holistic, participatory, inclusive, eco-friendly and gender-sensitive gender flood mitigation methods and the implementation of which will result in a flood-resilient India. The guidelines drawn from experience of flood management stipulates mitigation with the following regimen. Mechanism for joint formulation of forecasts by the CWC, the Central Water Commission, Indian Meteorological Department, National Remote Sensing Agency, states May, t May 2008. Identification of flood-prone areas, that is villages, blocks, tehsils and districts and marking on national, state and district level maps by the Central Water Commission, Ganga Flood Control Commission, Brahmaputra Board and the state governments in collaboration with the National Remote Sensing Agency and the Survey of India in June 2008. Finalization of plans for expansion of modernization of flood forecasting and warning systems and development of DSS for management of floods by the Central Water Commission, India, Indian Meteorological Department and the state governments June 2008. Making an assessment of the area suffering from drainage congestion by the state governments June 2008. Making an assessment of the area suffering from erosion by the state governments June 2008. Categorization of flood disaster by National Disaster Management Authority and the State Disaster Management Authorities June 2008. Introduction of module on financial management in education in schools, technical institutions, defense forces, academies, administrative training institutes, etc. by the Ministry of Human Resources Development, Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Home Affairs, State Governments, State Disaster Management Authorities, June 2008. Documentation of floods by the State Governments, June 2008. Identification of reservoirs for reviewing and modifying the op operation manuals and the rule curves by the State Governments in consultation with the Central Water Commission, Ganga, what is that called? Ganga Flood Control Commission and the Brahmaputra Board, June 2008. Amendment of building bylaws to make future buildings in flood prone areas flood safe by the State Governments and the State Disaster management authorities and the urban local bodies June 2008 uh, establishing a mechanism for intrastate coordination by the state governments and the state disaster management authorities June 2008 establishing a mechanism for joint operation for reservoirs on interstate rivers by the state governments and the state disaster management authorities June 2008 establishing a system for monitoring of landslides causing blockages in the rivers by the Central Water Commission National Remote Sensing Agency state governments state Disaster Management Authorities, December 2008. <laughs> Preparation of financial management plans by the central ministries and the departments, December 2008. Preparation of financial management plans by the state governments and the state disaster management authorities, December 2008. Notification of regulation for prohibiting reclamation of wetlands and natural depressions by the state governments and the state disaster management authorities, December 2008. Carrying out special studies on problems of erosion on the rivers Brahmaputra, Mahananda, Ghandak, by the National Disaster Management Authority in collaboration with the state governments and the Central Water Commission, Ganga Flood Control
Commission Brahmaputra Board March 2009 approval and beginning of implementation of national flood mitigation project by the national disaster management authorities and the state governments March 2009 construction of flood shelters by the state governments and the state disaster management authorities March 2009 identification and preparation of proposals and implementation of priority flood protection and drainage improvement FP and DI works embankments anti erosion measures drainage improvement works and the sea walls coastal protection works by the state governments in consultation with the central water commission the ganga flood control commission brahmaputra board june 2009 preparation of maps to a scale of 1 is to 10000 with contours at an interval of 0.5 meters per 1 meter and digital elevation model of the flood prone areas by the national remote sensing agency and the soil what's soi i don't know and soi using satellite data and airborne laser terrain mapping june 2010 preparation of flood vulnerability flood hazard maps by the central water commission ganga flood control commission and the brahmaputra board in collaboration with the national remote sensing agency january 2010 institutionalizing the role of uh, cbos and ngos that is community based organizations and non governmental organizations women's groups youth organizations corporate houses and other stakeholders in flood response by state disaster management authorities district disaster management authorities june 2008 reorganization reorientation of fire and emergency services police forces civil defense organizations home guards for flood response by the state disaster management authorities and the district disaster management authorities june 2008 raising and operationalizing state disaster response forces by the state disaster management authorities june 2008 strengthening or restructuring of the ganga flood control commission by the ministry of water resources september 2008 strengthening and restructuring of the brahmaputra board by the ministry of water resources september 2008 en enactment and enforcement of the flood plain zoning regulation by the state governments December 2008 developing integrated water resources management models for interstate rivers by the state governments March 2009 establishing a system for forecasting of flash floods by the Indian Meteorological Department September 2009 developing basin wise uh, integrated watershed management models for interstate rivers by the sorry it's not interstate inter integrated watershed management let me repeat this developing basin wise integrated water river management models for interstate rivers by the central water commission and the state governments for september 2009 notification of modified operation manuals rule curves of reservoirs identified under phase 1 and implementation of ag agreements for inflow forecast by the state governments and the central water commission uh, in december 2009 implementation of the scheme on expansion and modernization of the flood forecasting network and development of dss by the central water commission indian meteorological department and the state governments march 2010 finalizing memoranda of understandings and implementation of the network for collection and exchange of hydro meteorological data including strengthening and modernization of existing networks on rivers originating in nepal bhutan and china by the ministry of water resources and ministry of external affairs march 2010 setting up of national flood management institute by the ministry of water resources national disaster management authority to june 2010 examining adequacy and if required increasing the waterways of bridges culverts under roads and railways embankments by the ministry of shipping road transport and highways ministry of railways ministry of defense national highways authority of india border roads organization and the state governments june 2010 studies and consultations and finalization of the proposal for flood insurance by the ministry of water resources in collaboration with the ministry of finance insurance companies and state governments and implementation of a pilot project december 2008 and on large scale june 2010 preparation of the uh, district disaster mitigation plans for reservoirs by the state governments december 2010 making public utility buildings and installations flood safe by the government of india state governments and the urban local bodies and pub panchayati raj institutions december 2010 establishing river basin organizations by the ministry of water resources and the state governments june 2010 preparation of dprs that is i think disaster preparation reports for storage reservoirs in india by the state governments central organization december 2010 and in bhutan and nepal march 2012 preparation of dprs for long term flood uh, flood prone and di fp and di measures i read it earlier such as embankments 
anti-erosion measures, drainage improvement works, and sea walls or coastal protection works by the state governments and central organizations, December 2008, and completion of the works by March 2012. Phase 3 commences with completion of link activities in Phase 2. Watershed management, catchment area treatment, and afforestation schemes in critical areas by the state governments and central organizations, March 2012. Construction of storage reservoirs by the state government, central organizations, December 2017. Negotiations with Nepal and Bhutan for construction of reservoirs, watershed management, catchment area treatment and afforestation measures in their territories and preparation of DPRs and implementation of the schemes by the government of India and the governments of Nepal and Bhutan, December 2025. Inspection of dams, embankments and other structural measures by the state governments twice every year, once before monsoon in April and May and the second time after monsoon, November, December. Restoration and strengthening of works by the state governments every year. Monitoring of structural measures by the state governments throughout the year with special attention during monsoon, expansion and modernization of flood forecasting and warning network and the DSS for flood management as and when required, important aspects of the guidelines. While all the activities under the guidelines are important for minimizing flood risk and loss of lives and properties, the issues which need special attention are the following. Indiscriminate encroachment of the flood plains of the rivers and the waterways of natural and man-made drainage channels and reclamation of ponds, chores, lakes and depressions have led to increased flood risk to lives and properties. The regulation of the development activities in these areas and an appropriate techno-legal regime based on the model bill circulated by the Central Water Commission is an urgent necessity. The change in priority in use of storage space of the multi-purpose reservoirs for irrigation, hydropower, drinking and industrial water supply by ignoring flood models moderation has led to large-scale flooding. The operation manuals and the rule curves of all the reservoirs will be reviewed and modified to give priority to more flood moderation. Flood forecasting and warning is a non-structural measure which aims at minimizing losses and enabling the agencies concerned to plan rescue and relief measures. The efforts of the uh, Central Water Commission, uh, Indian Meteorological Department, National Remote Sensing Agency and the state governments will be integrated and a mechanism developed wherein during the monsoon, the representatives of all these organizations and the basin states work together in formulation and dissemination of reliable forecasts and warning. The national vision is to minimize the vulnerability to floods and the consequent loss of lives, livelihood systems, property and damage to infrastructure and the public utilities and to build a safer India by developing a holistic, proactive, multi-disaster and technology-driven strategy for disaster mitigation. This is to be achieved through a combination of preventive, mitigative and preparatory measures to generate a prompt and efficient response after the occurrence of flood. The entire process will focus on the community and will be sustained through the collective efforts of the government and the non-governmental organizations. The value of these guidelines will essentially be in the efficacy of the uh, flood mitigation plans that will consequently be made and implemented by the central ministries and the departments and state governments. The central government and the state governments will provide necessary resources, both financial and managerial, for creating adequate structures at all levels to make measures required to minimize risk and vulnerability to floods. Floods and famines have ravaged mankind from the time immemorial and a vast store of knowledge and experience is available on handling these disasters. An attempt has been made in these guidelines to build on this precious heritage while simultaneously factoring in the benefits of modern technology and scientific advantages apart from emphasizing the value of concerted action and sustained efforts at mitigation. That is all for tonight. We have finished a sub chapter on floods, flash floods and, la and landslides. Landslides will come more as a, uh, um, as a slideshow in the following weeks. And we have also finished floods, famine and yeah, flash floods tonight. In the next week's reading, I will be reading about hailstorms. Until then, take care, stay home, stay safe and keep smiling. Ciao.